subtool. There we go. Okay, this guy's already panel looped. Let's go back to this guy. I'm going to duplicate him so I can work with him. So this is the original guy. And uh, we're going to go a little old school, not the slice brush. Let's just see what we can get away with with grouping. I know I want that bubble. Control W. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Okay, and also mask by polygroup is on. So if you're wondering why it's um, behaving a little nicer, that's why. And I already know what I'm going to do here. We're going to do the same thing. But first I need to get that together and then Control W. All right. I'm going to mask this entire piece. Very fast. Faster than anything else. You know, let's just come in, control W, W, W. Let's see how much we can get away with with this. Okay. Those are the really the pieces. No, I want to I want to separate out this. And I already know my routine, right? Control W. And real quick, I want to get this individual unit. Okay, there we go. Anything else? Anything that's central to the form needs to be defined. Let's separate out these guys. And let's separate out these guys. Okay, anything else? All right, now I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go in with the crease brush. So notice that there's, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Wow. Uh, crease brush. Okay. I don't really want to be creating separate poly groups for this per se. I just want to say that's a crease brush. So I'm going to press Control Shift, Alt Tap, go there. But remember, oh well, this one's not, yeah, it's not working with symmetry. What it is doing is projecting kind of straight through according to camera angle. So. Let's just go this way. Boom, 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 like that. Okay, and same here. Control, voila. Control, shift. Let's get a edge right there. Let's make sure. Um, Dynamesh is off. Okay. 
Control Shift, Tap Alt. Okay. Part of me wants to put something right down the middle. Maybe that'll have some effect. And also right here. Okay. So I'm using crease to kind of set me up. Um, but I want to also Boom, boom. Okay. Okay. All right, now we come into deformation, polish by feature. And uh, let's turn this off. And now we're ready. You know, it, where's our work? We did a lot of work here organizing this. Is it going to pay off? Maybe, maybe not. So check that out. Let's go up. We have a couple options. I'm going to say that to a closed sphere. Not a lot of change. Not very sexy, but let's make that an open circle and start to use this and set it all the way to 100. And now we're getting significantly better results for our money. And the polygroupings are nice and clean. You know, I could even technically at this point use panel loops because everything here is, is pretty consistent. You know? Everything is basically the pieces that I would want. And it's done real quick. So the key to it was organizing my brain. The key to getting quick with this, I'll rephrase, is, was organizing my brain. And that's what I'm trying to present to you guys, is that there's a system, and you have to know what you want to be doing. So in general, when people get to hard surface, they think, oh, man, panel loops is amazing. But it is just really one part of a very huge puzzle that has a crazy amount of possibility. And so really what you're talking about is uh, the ability to say separate parts, okay, define curvature, which is your polish level, define creasing, which is the crease brush, okay, and then really roughly, okay, roughly establish you know, really complex shapes using what? Using groups and a real basic block-in. But now I've got a real interesting form here that I can start to work with. This is a really nice clean form and then that extra creasing along the sides really helps. The creasing there is really going to help me get the form right. I can see this. This is good. I'm liking everything. I am set up now to get in and start to sculpt this stuff. Uh, but it's all been freehand. I haven't known what I'm doing and I could do a bunch of these all in the morning, a bunch of crazy shapes and just play with crease, see what happens and just start to really flesh out a design. What is the most important part of this entire system in your view? Let me ask you that question. We've looked at a lot of features but what do you think is the single most important feature to working with hard surfaces? Yeah, Michael, Steve, you guys got it. It's basically a feature that has been there since uh, ZBrush 2, which is polygroups. That's it. They just built on that. They found new ways for you to make polygroups and then new things for you to do to your polygroups. So the key is groups.
which is great because now we know what they're going to build on. All right. So the next thing for us to do is start to go free form on a demo soldier on some kind of character and see if we can make some sense out of that. And so what I'm going to do is spend probably about 10 minutes just messing around and then we're just going to call it a day. And uh, your assignment will be to create a mech suit, a mech uh, item, like a car, a motorcycle, or something like that. And just make sure that you understand um, the, the workflow. Okay? Not necessarily all those individual features, but the workflow of rough it in, establish form, and get moving. Because the one thing I really want to keep in your mind is that uh, somebody like, let's say take Steve Lord for an example, uh, or uh, you could take Zach. Back in the olden days, um, Zach knew basically the standard brush and smooth brush and geometry levels. He knew some other things, but he didn't know, you know all this in-depth stuff. You're here to learn in-depth, but you're here to learn it in context of like absolute, of what's important, where's the workflow go, and the context is really find that most important feature and really try to build your artistry from there. So let's go into, I mean, I'd use Nick, but that, um, and I don't want to use super, I'll use my guy, the demo soldier. Oh, it loaded already. All right. Uh, I don't need all those extra parts, and in fact, I might just clone it so that I have free subtools. So I just pressed clone, and that duplicated the existing, the subtool I had selected and made it its own subtool. You know, I, let me point this out. I love what Kathleen just said. Uh, it's like paints. You don't really think about the molecular structure of paint, uh, but you know what it does. 